How does it mm. work? The prosecutor and all the counsels, plus the judge, do they all come to the same table to talk about the proposed plea bagging? Because I'm asking, uh, because of the uh, reaction from the prosecutor, uh, because he was shocked, he was surprised to the extent that he said he wasn't going to speak to any of the journalists uh, on that day. So uh, do you do that in isolation of the prosecutor? No. You don't do it in isolation of the prosecutor. But going back to the first element of your question, you do it without the involvement of the judge. The judge is not a party. He does not partake in the discussions that you know, lead to plea bargaining. Is he bound to it accept? Is, he's not bound if we, if, if we follow you know, strictly the word bound. He has discretions. Okay. And when a judge has discretion, he has to discharge his discretion judiciously and judicially. In other words, he has to operate within the ambit of the law, but again, he has to do it in a timely fashion in a reasonable fashion. Indeed, if, if we apply what we call the Wensbury rule, it, it's about what someone in authority who has discretionary powers to discharge can do. What he has to do has to be lawful, it has to be reasonable, it has to meet certain parameters that are acceptable within the justice system. Okay. But the way it plays out in real life is you would have two parties, the prosecution, usually the EFCC operatives in this case, now, that may include lawyer to the EFCC, and the gentleman might not have been carried along. Either is possible. And that will make, I mean, that's why it would make sense that he's surprised if he was not privy to the discussions. Right. If the EFCC operatives felt, oh, look, this is our case, this is our prosecution, I'm the IPO, I conducted the investigation, I went through all, I briefed you of the facts. Okay. So we'll discuss this. So the EFCC then might be discussing with counsel for the accused person, without the knowledge of counsel for EFCC. It might also be with his involvement. I, I was not there, but it may be with or without his involvement. But when this is done, and then the two parties agree to a level that appears acceptable to both, that they come back to court and tell the judge who was not part of the discussion, this is the scenario we have on our hands. Okay. And then a motion to amend comes. All right. Well, let's talk about this because, I mean, Aisha raises it, and uh, we talked about it also. It talks, that's the EFCC Act. She did point out that in 2002, the act which you talked about had 23, or is it 25 Four. years, 24 years imprisonment? But then, if you look at uh, 2004, as amended, unless there's something wrong with it, Section 18, which talks about offenses in relation to economic and financial crimes and petitions, uh, subsection 2 says... Quote, the penalties provided for offenses under subsection 1 of this section shall be imprisonment for a term not less than two years and not exceeding three years. So it's been brought down from 24 or 24 years. Between 15 and 25. Yeah, but this says two not exceeding three years. Okay, let's even, well, assume, that. Wrong okay, let's even assume that because it has gone through a number of amendments. Let's even assume that it is even two years. Let's even assume, <coughs> excuse me, that it is even two years yeah. as we had under the penal code under which he was arraigned. What one would have expected was that given the amount of money involved, the amount of public outcry, and the fact that the accused persons are not remorseful because in the first case, in the first case, they actually pleaded guilty. Yeah, so that's because it was a plea bargain. Yeah. So you have to plead guilty. So, where, plea so where's the remorse value? Because this counsel said now, he showed remorse. Yes. Of course, your counsel will hold your brief. I wouldn't expect him to say otherwise. <laughs> so what did the judge rely upon in agreeing that even two years that people would have thought was too, you know, far too small a, a length of time for that kind of a, an offense. Some call it a slap on the wrist. Oh. That's, I mean, even putting it lightly. It's far worse than that. What stops the judge from pronouncing two years? That's the maximum sentence. 
Why but, not? But in a plea bargain, you can't get maximum sentence, or can you? Already has exercised discretion in allowing the charges or the counts that will, <coughs> excuse me, the, ch the charges or the counts that will take, you know, longer times of imprisonment to be withdrawn. Longer than two years? Longer which than is two years. That was how they arrived at a three and uh, taken out from the others. They, they could have run concurrently or consecutively. In which case, then, you might be having to deal with two in three places. It could have been, okay, two years is the maximum, then you get two, because the provision says two, I mean, uh, imprisonment and or fine. So, if he is surprised, as the EFCC uh, 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 counsel mm -hmm. is surprised, probably we would have seen a verdict showing a term of two years imprisonment and fine of so, so 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 amount. But there's this view that the maximum is two years and not more because these are accounts of charges. Each count. For count, each count. Yeah, counts leading to a major offense of which is being charged. And so some views are of the opinion that no, it, it can be two years for each count, which may, even if it runs consecutively or concurrently, it can be more than two years. Well, if, is it, that runs, if it runs concurrently, it will be two. And that is usually the case. But in some cases, because the court has a discretion, let's not forget that. Yeah. He has a discretion, and he can choose to make them run consecutively. That yes, means he can we're have looking more. at six years. Yes, then. He, yes, he can get six years. Yeah. But let's even have, uh, assume that he's lenient enough to go for a concurrent term of years. Two years imprisonment mm -hmm. plus how much? a handsome sum of money, and it should have been seen that the proceeds of the fraud was recovered. The assets, about 13 houses yeah. that the man you know, was alleged to have built mm. with the money have all been recovered, seized, his accounts frozen. Then, I mean, for the psychology of everyone you know, watching this scenario, it would have looked just. Because one, it would be seen that he did not go away with the proceeds of fraud. It would have been seen that he was made to pay back, so, I mean, all the money or whatever was left of the money before his arrest and prosecution. And then he's made to go to jail. And if he has to pay fine, it has to be substantial. Yes, under whatever the provisions of the law, mm -hmm. you know, makes the cap then okay. it could be understandable. Okay, so are you saying then that in spite of the fact that it's a plea bargain and that the judge had, uh, can express judicial discretion, he could have still gotten a maximum sentence of two years? It could have. It could have. It is either two years, a term, and or, so it could, it could be the application of... There's a conjunction the, Yes, there the fine and with the... Or, and the money. Oh. It could also decide... Conviction, I mean, two years in jail, no money. It could also be, yes, the money, no jail time as he has done. Mind you, I mean, let, let me draw a line here. What the judge has done is lawful. Let's make no mistakes about that. What the judge has done, as we can say, as far as the law goes, is lawful. The law gives him a discretion. He could say two years, and that's it, nothing more. He could say... X amount of money in Naira, and that's all, as he has done here. He okay. acted within what the law, what the uh, uh, penal code provides for. But I am just saying that, yes, it is one thing to act ju judicially, to act within the law. But when we begin to look at the reasonableness, which is another element that is in want here, what is the reasonableness of asking someone to pay a fine of 750 by the way, <laughs> each of the counts carries 250,000 Naira, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it was multiplication of 250 in three places that earned the man 750. Yeah. And that's concurrent. I mean, so that's consecutive. Okay. Else, he would have paid 250.